everyone. This is Madeline Dale with the Chapter Goddess. And today with me, I have Patrick Leclerc. Patrick, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your work. Hi, uh, I'm Patrick Leclerc. I'm an author. I've been, I've been writing, I've been putting my books out since 2012. Um, I do kind of a all over the map as far as speculative fiction. I do some fantasy, some science fiction, um, urban fantasy, sword and sorcery stuff. I've had a couple of short stories. Um, my, to pay the bills, I'm a paramedic. Um, so there's a lot of that. I have, I've been married um, for quite some time to my, my lovely wife who does most of my covers and is a graphic designer. And I have a uh, son who's just gonna turn 14 next month. So that's pretty much right. And I have two cats who may or may not walk through the shot at some point, so. Same here. I think I have got two of them locked in here in the room with me. So one has been fussing at me all day today. So where do you get your inspiration for your characters in your novels? A lot of the character inspirations come from uh, people I know. Just not exactly, exactly, but I get via personality quirks and the way people talk and, and the, the way people say things or approach um, certain situations. I, so I draw a lot of inspiration from that. Um, a lot of my books tend to revolve around um, partnerships. I have a lot of, um, and a lot of that comes from working as a medic on the truck. You get used to working with one partner. If you work for a long time, you get to where you can almost read each other's minds kind of thing. So I take a lot of that element and put it into my my stuff. Um, as far as general ideas, I get I get impressions. They just kind of come to me throughout the day. Sometimes a song will, will evoke a certain idea or a certain memory or something like that, and that'll kind of sit there and and uh, percolate. And usually, the way I write is I start with an idea. I don't really outline. I'll start with an idea. And that'll turn to something. It'll, maybe it's a character, maybe it's a scene, maybe it's a situation. And I'll write that piece. And then I'll be like, oh, all right, how does that fit into the world? And I kind of build out. And then I have to clean up the whole mess at the end after I get a rough draft. But that's kind of where my, you know, I, I, I leave myself open to inspiration. And I kind of run with it. And that kind of explains why I'm all over the map rather than doing just one, you know, series of, you know, seven books in a series. It's been, you know some urban fantasy, some science fiction, sword and sorcery stuff. So I'm all over the place. That's good. That actually, I, I'm the same way. I, my stuff is multiple genres. I've never six with just one thing. And then ideas come out of nowhere. Um, you mentioned that you try to fit it into your world. Where do you get your ideas for world building? So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty light on world building, honestly. Um, I, Going back to when I was in high school and, and even probably middle school, I was a big reader of fantasy. So I kind of absorbed a lot of the older fantasy tropes just from reading a bunch of the, um, you know, obviously the, the classics, the Lord of the Rings, the Terry Pratchett stuff, that, you know, Robert Jordan stuff, the, the Terry Brooks, all those things. So that kind of just um, sits with you. I also get a lot, um, I've worked, again, working as a medic, I've done a lot of work in urban situations so my cities even my fantasy cities I pull a lot of the feel of a city from places I've worked uh, and again I think it's just being open to what's going on around you and you you kind of absorb things that you then make your own so there's little little pieces of influence um, kind of from everywhere but I'm not a, I'm not <laughs> I'm not the guy that, that draws detailed maps and makes up my own language. And, and that's just not my approach. Um, some of my stuff like the, my urban fantasy obviously takes place in our world. Um, so it's a, a lot of observation, but I wouldn't say this world building per se. And uh, my science fiction and fantasy is my near future science fiction. So it's space, but it's, it's recognizable space. It's our solar system. So it's stuff that happens on Mars, happens in the asteroid belt. And it's things that, again, it's not, not a far reach. Um, so that's, so I'm not really a big world builder. I think that if you have a consistent world and you feel it, that's fine. But I don't really, 
again, I'm not, I'm not Tolkien with languages. I'm not Martin with writing feasts and heraldry and everything like that. I just kind of leave it where the reader kind of feels familiar enough that they'll fill in the blanks. That's a good way to go. I struggle with like, I don't think I could tackle creating a language myself. That's pretty difficult. I've always felt it was amazing though that those authors did that. And I've always been curious as to how they came up with that and like pick certain things for each thing. But it's just, it's way out there. <laughs> it is, it's amazing. It's amazing that they, they could, a, a Tolkien in particular could keep that many distinct civilizations and cultures with their own, their own language, their own customs, their own feel. And they don't feel like, they feel like they were created independently and they're, and they're internally consistent, they work together. And that's, that's pretty amazing. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's been so enduring over what, 60, 70 years since it was written, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. So, and we still, we still drawn to it today. Yeah, and they're even recreating it with like a new Netflix thing from what yeah. I've read on the internet, which is insane. I'm excited about it, not gonna lie, but yeah. it's been a while since I've watched the movies. So, um, so how does your job affect your writing schedule? What does your writing schedule look like? Um, my writing schedule is pretty erratic. I honestly, so I take my laptop to work uh, because it, as a medic, we work, we work long shifts, but there's downtime and it can be more or less depending on the day. So I'll try to, I can, I'll try to do some work in between times when things are, are, are quiet. And then on my days off, I'll block out periods of time to write. I don't give myself, um, I don't give myself word goals because there's some days that you struggle and it takes hours to do a hundred words. And there's some days that it's just flowing. So like, I'll say, all right, today, uh, after breakfast, I'm going to write until noon because I've got that piece of time and it might be a thousand words. It might be 2000 words. It might be 200 words. And I have to cut 150 of them because I'm just wrestling with it. And the thing about that, so my first book, my first published book, which was, um, out of nowhere, this one came out in 2012. Ooh, I like that. Uh, thank you. My son had just very recently been born when I started writing it. So I was working full time and I had a toddler, I had an infant at home at first. So I wrote in 20 minute chunks and it was, you could kind of tell when you read it, the, the rough draft, you could see where all the, the, the breaks were. And it was a lot, it was a lot of work to smooth it out but I think it's kind of proof that sometimes you just have to find the time. And if you have to piece together, you know, half an hour in the morning, half an hour at night, two or three days a week, you can, you can make it work. I mean, I know there's a piece of advice going around that you have to write every day. And I don't think that that's accurate. I don't think that's realistic. Yeah. I'm with you on that. It is impossible as a parent and like yeah. Even working part time in healthcare stuff, it's just like impossible. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, maybe there are people that can do it, and like that's great. Like if you have a schedule where you know that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up a half hour early and get a half hour in before everybody else gets up. That's terrific, but that's just never been my life. So I write when I can. Yes, I am with you on that because like I'm on my feet a lot anymore because yeah. I wasn't working for a while. Now that I'm back working, it's exhausting. I get home yep. and then do all the kids stuff. And it's like, okay, it's time to get him in bed. And then I am exhausted. Exactly. So, yes. It's just, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to push to write tonight. We'll see how my body feels tomorrow. If I can get it written, I'll do it. I'm, so exactly. I'm with you on not writing every day. It's like not a, not a thing. <laughs> Yeah, because you've got to, I mean, you, everybody's life is different. Most of us are writing not as our primary job, not as our primary income. Now, if that yeah. was my only job, if I was making all my money from writing, that would be different. And I could set myself a schedule and not have to worry about the day job. But especially as a new writer, none of us get paid up front. This is like we're mm. writing and hoping to sell down the road. So we all have the day job. We all have family obligations. And you just, you got to take care of yourself. You can't let it become another stressor, I think. Yeah. So with working in the medical field, do you feel like since the pandemic started, did it slow down your writing or did it affect it in any way? Um, I think it slowed it down a little bit more because 
but we got busy, we got a little busier. Um, so I was working a little bit more, but it wasn't really that as much as just the mental toll of dealing with it mm-hmm. kind of made it harder to write. Cause I'd come home and it'd be harder to get out of my, um, out of my daily routine and into my writing and to keep, to keep my writing, cause some of it went to a dark place because what we're dealing with. And that may be good, it may be bad. So that you can, I mean, I, I can tell that I'm writing differently, um, but it does. I, everything we do kind of changes us a little bit. And I think that comes through. Yeah, that's understandable. So with your characters, do you have a favorite character, one that you could see yourself spending all your time with? I don't know about all my time, but I have, um, I have my favorites. I really enjoy... So I have my, um, my two favorites to write. I have a, it's a buddy rogue um, sword and sorcery comedy action kind of thing. And there's two characters. It's a, a female thief and a male kind of retired mercenary and they team up and they go on heists. And it's there's this kind of back and forth, witty banter, snarky thing. And it's just a lot of fun. And I could, it's no effort to write them because they basically write themselves. I'll start with the dialogue and it's just, it's such a comfortable feel with these characters. And I know what they're going to say. And I, it just, it, it really flows. So they're a lot of fun. And then I have um, some side characters who are, are fun. Side characters can be terrific because your protagonist has to carry the weight of being the protagonist. The sidekick can just be a sidekick. And you can, you can run with them and you can do stuff that you couldn't get away with with the main character. And so I have a lot of fun with the, you know, <clears throat> the uh, reliable, reliable scumbag sidekick kind of character. And they should obviously be played by Ben Affleck, like a Goodwill Hunting era. And that's just a fun place to write. I, I do that with my, um, out of nowhere, it's an urban fantasy that I drew heavily on my EMS career. It's the characters are paramedics. And I, I pulled some of the stuff from, you know, the, the banter back and forth. And I just, I just like the lovable jerk character. He's, they're a lot of fun to write. Those are fun characters to read. So yeah. I have to say, yeah, for sure on that one. I, I definitely have your books on my TV read list. It's, Thank you. The covers are so fun too. Um, let's see. We're going to have a random question. What is your favorite drink? Uh, I think my favorite drink, I, I'm going to have to go with coffee. I, that, that's what I, I drink the most of. That's what, what fuels me. That's what keeps me going. Yes. Obviously it depends on the time, but that's, I'm, I'm, I run on coffee. Yes. I, and I can imagine with being in EMS, you kind of have to be on your toes and go, go, go when the crisis is needed. So um, if you could tell your readers something interesting about yourself, what would it be? Um, so I've been a, I was a competitive fencer in college and uh i i actually got a national rating back in 1989 um in uh olympic style saber it was collegiate saber but uh since then as i got older the uh historical european martial arts um thing has gotten a lot bigger and it's it's a more realistic it's a more um I would call it yeah, physical a- athletic archaeology kind of thing. It's more learning about how the stuff worked mm-hmm. and it's a lot of fun. So uh, the thing about me is I still routinely go out and get and let people beat me up with sticks and it's, <laughs> you know, for fun and profit. So it's. That's awesome. That's a very fun hobby thing to do. How did you get into that as a kid? I all I always wanted to, to sword fight. I grew up with that. I grew up with the, uh, you know, all my heroes were like, you know, I, I was Robin Hood and Errol Flynn pirate movies and stuff. And I went to college and I had like just extra time in my schedule and I was looking for a class and I'm like, oh, intro to fencing. I'll take that. I'll see how that is. And I loved it. And it was just, it was just fun. It was a great bunch of people. Everybody who was there was there because they'd seen Princess Bride and, you know, it was just, we bonded over that kind of, um, you know, whole lifestyle of, you know, that, that, the media and that, that kind of play. So I just kind of got into it. It's, it's, it's a great sport for nerds. You know, you can still indulge your. 
That is so fun. That's why it's fun. I've always so, wanted to do that. Like, but they never offered anything around here for that. So Oklahoma, we need to get it together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let our readers know where they can find you and your work. So uh, my personal website is inkandbourbon.com. It's all one word. Um, obviously, I'm on Amazon. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Twitter. And I've also done some work with, um, I've written some short stuff for uh, Quantum Muse, which was a short story magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've written some short stuff for uh, Bar to the Isles magazine, which is a British and Irish writer's um, society and i guess i qualify because my ancestors escaped and came over um so i'm kind of all over the map uh i've done a lot of stuff with the um uh spiffbo the self-published fantasy blog off which has run for a couple years i was entered in there for a few years i finaled i was in the finals one year and i've been involved with a lot of that, that um group on facebook so I'm, I'm fairly active on a couple of fronts that is awesome well, thank you so much for being on our show today. Readers, I'll have links to all of his websites and his social media below. And thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me.